crew of Tux and the crew of Isis. And on Sunday, Thoth, o- Okinos. Okinos, and crew of Mid City. The first of the super crews and Damon uh, parades Saturday night with the celebrity led Bacchus parade on Sunday night. So there's two things that are important, like two um, people okay. in the parades. So uh, the flambeau, the flame bearers, um, meaning flame torch carriers originally before electric lighting served as a beacon for, for new Orleans parade goers for better enjoyment of the spectacle of night parades, the first flambeau characters were slaves. Today, the flambeau are a connection to the New Orleans version of Carnival and a valued contribution. Many people view the flambeau carrying as a kind of performance art, a valid assessment given the wild gyrations and flourishes displayed by experienced flambeau characters in the parade. Many individuals are descended from a long line of carriers. It is tradition when the flambeau carriers pass by during a parade to toss quarters to them in thanks for carrying their lights, uh, the lights of carnival in the 21st century, though handing dollar bills is more common. Well, yeah, uh, who's gonna run and pick up quarters? So, the Rex. We've <clears throat> yeah. been talking about the Rex. Mm-hmm. Rex. Each year in New Orleans, crews are responsible for electing a Rex, the king of the carnival. The Rex organization was formed to create a daytime parade for the residents of the city. The Rex's motto is "Pro Bono Publico" for the good for the public good. So do you think it's kind of like the mayor of like the holiday, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. He's just like the or figurehead. Celebration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's like crowned. Like, it's, it's like, like the, the king Grinch, of the Mardi Gras. The, the, the holiday cheermeister. <laughs> yeah. Something yes. like that. It's just, it's just like a title. Yeah. Um, so one big thing that happens Mardi Gras is public nudity. <laughs> yes. Well known for. <laughs> Wearing less clothing than considered decent in other contexts during Mardi Gras has been documented since 1889 when the Times Democrat decried the degree of immodesty exhibited by nearly all female masqueraders seen on the street. Risque costumes, including body painting, is fairly common. The practice of exposing female breasts in exchange for Mardi Gras beads, however, was mostly limited to tourists in the upper Bourbon Street area. Shocker. <laughs> in the crowded streets of the French Quarter, generally avoided by locals on Mardi Gras Day, flashers on balconies cause crowds to form on the streets. <laughs> in the last decades of the 20th century, a rise in producing commercial videotapes catering to voyeurs helped encourage a tradition of women bearing their breasts in exchange for beads and trinkets. Social scientists studying ritual disrobement found at Mardi Gras 1991 nearly 1,200 instances of body bearing in exchange for beads and other favors. <laughs> Like, hey, you want to buy me a drink? I'll show you my tits. I'll show you my tits. It's our kind of party, man. (laughs) And uh, I mean, that's just my brief little dive into Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. (sighs) Sorry, we have to do a stretch and breathe. Well, she started yawning, or she stretched, which made me yawn, and whatever. Yeah. So, um,. Anything else you want to say about Mardi Gras? No. I mean, it's become Americanized. It's where it's all about eating food. <laughs> oh, darn. And beads. Yeah. Earning your beads. So, uh, apparently, I didn't write this down, but I read that um, each one of the crews, especially yeah. the bigger ones, they mint coins just okay. for each Mardi Gras. That's and they cool. generally don't throw them off the parades because yeah. they are very valuable. Yes. And collectors bid for them. So That's cool. Um, because they've been throwing <coughs> these coins ever since the Mardi Gras Day parade started. Yeah. 
But um, the first few years they did it, they never minted them with a date. Uh, so finding those ones is very rare. Yeah. And then being able to like carbon date them, like that's for like all the super collectors. Yeah. Pay attention. It's time for the regularly scheduled portion of the podcast, Song of the Week. Are you ready to move on to our regularly scheduled portion of the podcast? Mm, Yes. Go ahead, baby. So my Song of the Week this week is Beautiful Boy by John Lennon because it's just been stuck in my head. And I've chosen it to be the one that I dance with my sons at their weddings to. So. Oh. Um, mine, I only just listened to it this morning. Yeah. But, uh, it's King by Florence and the Machine. Love it. And it's fantastic. I don't know if it's a new drop or not, but it was something that, like, once I signed on to my music platform, Pandora, yeah. it was like, listen to this music. Listen to it. <laughs> so I did, and I loved it. Love. It was so, it was so cool. moody. It's like. Yeah. Ugh, just perfect. <laughs> This week on the Cena segment. So, Cena segment. I think it's going to be super short this week. Okay. Um, Destiny 2 The Witch Queen dropped, and it has consumed my life. Yeah. Um, no regrets. I mean, it's been nice having something to play with Andrew. Yes. Like, where we're in the same game, and he can help me, and then... Is this the one the sugar daddy bought you? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Sugar daddy got this from me. Mr. <laughs> J. Um, and I've been playing with his wife, too, because she also sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm still reading that poetry book that I posted on um, yeah. Instagram. It's... Uh-huh. I always think I'm like, oh, I'm going to read through these po- poetry books really fast, except they seem to take me longer than other books. Well, because you kind of contemplate on them. I do. Mm-hmm. However, because I need to balance my pleasure reading, I mean, they're all pleasure reading, but my yeah. pleasure reading with my heavy reading, um, I downloaded a book last night. Yeah. And it's called Enchanted by Nancy Mador. Okay. And they're retellings of fairy tales. But they're very erotic. erotic and they're short stories. It's literally retellings for women. I love it. <laughs> oh my God. The first chapter, the first story was Beauty and the Beast. <gasps> and I'm like, Ooh. wow. <laughs> and spoiler, she's all like, now that he's transformed into the prince, I miss the beast. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's it for me. Um, and we start. Um, sorry, we start book club this week. Oh yeah! So th- this month's book club, we are reading the Diabolical Mist Hide by Viola Carr. Yeah. Now I've cheated and I've read this book before. Yes, Nicole has not, but it's been a, a while. Yeah, a couple of years. So um, there's plenty that I'm sure I forget. Yeah, but. It's kind of like a steampunky thriller investigation yeah. book. And I, I hope you're going to have fun with it. Because I think I will. It's, a, it's, unlike other, it's unlike other books. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to the Wife Wednesday podcast. I'm Shrove Tuesday. And I'm Fat Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Ah! God damn it! <laughs> We're still here. (laughs) That felt so good. That felt so good. All right, wives. We are at Wife Wednesday Pod on Instagram and Facebook. And because Twitter can go fuck themselves, you can find us at Wife Wed Podcast. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and of course, on our host, Spreaker. You can reach out to us on any platform or email us directly at info at wifewednesdaypod.com. Our episodes drop every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, we post Song of the Week every week on Instagram stories and it is saved in highlights. And for our book clubs, we have all the books we read listed on Goodreads, which can be found on our link tree located in our bio on all platforms, along with our Spotify Song of the Week playlists. 
We would also like to thank our manager, Dustin, for dealing with us on a weekly basis. 